Today, I'm going to do my best to show you all how a mechanical fuel pump works which I've learned from my own personal experience here. I've, I've never dealt with uh, fuel pumps before, and I've never taken one apart and really gotten into it to see how they work. But I've got an engine here, and I'll show you it in a little bit. It's a Wisconsin four-cylinder gasoline engine that came off of a, uh, a wind power generator. And it's a 30 horsepower, so it's pretty good size. And I pulled the mechanical fuel pump off it and just opened it up to take a look at it because it's probably going to have to be replaced. This engine sat for about 15 years now without being used. So we're going to have to do a lot of work on it to get this thing running. But while I got the mechanical fuel pump apart here, I thought I'd just uh, let you take a look inside of it and see how it works on this Wisconsin engine. But about fuel pumps, a lot of modern day vehicles, I should say, I believe all modern day vehicles now, are equipped with electric fuel pumps. They have their disadvantages and their advantages. One of the advantages of an electronic fuel pump is if you run out of fuel, you don't have to crank the engine and drain the battery, getting fuel back into the combustion chamber so the engine will run again. The electric pump runs off the vehicle's battery, the 12 volt battery, to pump the fuel up into the combustion chamber and bleed the air out. Mechanical pumps run on the engine's crankshaft. So the engine crankshaft has to be turning for that pump to be running. If your lines are full of air when you've run out of fuel, you have to keep cranking the engine to get fuel up into your combustion chamber. Now, with some smaller engines, like, Hon like smaller Honda engines, 5 horsepower, Briggs, Tecumseh, and uh, even some bigger ones like uh, Honda 24 horsepower twin cylinders, or Briggs engines that are bigger, Kohler is another one, uh, the fuel tank is located so close to the engine and most of the time, the fuel is fed into the engine by gravity. So there's no need for a fuel pump. And that's why the engine will start so quickly after you run out of, a, after you run out of fuel in your vehicle. But think, think of it in this way too. In a vehicle, you've got your fuel tank all the way back here and your engine's all the way up here. Now. What happens if you run out of fuel? You got four to eight feet of fuel line, depending on how long your vehicle is, that's full of air because you've ran out of fuel. What do you have to do on an older vehicle to get all that air out? You have to crank and crank and crank and crank that baby like crazy. And it can take a little while too. If you've ever seen an older vehicle on the side of the road with the hood up and then another vehicle facing towards it and jumper cables going to either one of them, most likely that vehicle ran out of fuel and it has a mechanical fuel pump and they have to keep cranking the engine to get the fuel back into the engine. So let's take a look at a couple engines, actually a few engines that I have here, that run on mechanical fuel pumps. I guess I should mention an advantage with the mechanical fuel pumps as well, to be fair. One, because the electronic fuel pump fails so much more than a mechanical fuel pump. It's just the nature of the electric motor. It doesn't last forever. Mechanical fuel pumps, they almost basically cannot fail, which you'll see here when I show you this on uh, this Wisconsin engine right here. And you'll see why they're so much more reliable. And, but apparently, if it was, if I was the designer of the car, I would want my customer's vehicle to start up instantly right after they ran out of fuel. And our excursion, uh, I should say my mom ran our excursion out of fuel. And I was glad we had a, an electronic fuel pump on that thing because it was 16 degrees outside. That battery would have not lasted long pumping diesel fuel 
up through underneath that excursion up into that 7.3 diesel engine that takes so much cranking power. That battery would not have lasted long at all. And it would have been a little bit of a trouble that morning to get that engine running. The same thing has happened with this Kubota tractor in back of me. We've ran that out of fuel as well. Now that has a bleeding line on it which makes it much easier to drain all that, I should say, to flush all the air out of those lines. I should say bleed all the air out because if you want to refer to flush, that's in terms of talking about fuel. You flush fuel out or flush water out. But anyway, you bleed the air out of the lines on this tractor here, but since the fuel tank is so close to the engine, the fuel line is only about Ooh, maybe a foot long or so till it gets to the engine. Not much cranking at all is required and that engine's up and running again. So, but if you want to look at it that way, with a mechanical fuel pump, what do you think a fuel gauge is for? Sure, if your, if your fuel gauge fails, then you're going to have a problem. But I think they put the fuel gauge there so you can look at it, tell how much fuel's left in your tank so you don't run out. I mean, you should always have at least a half tank of fuel because you never know what's going to happen. And I know I haven't, I haven't done that all the time, neither has my mom or dad, obviously, since she ran ours out of fuel. But I do believe it's a good idea, if you're just doing your average driving, to have at least a half tank of fuel in your vehicle. If you're going on a long trip, I can see how it would get down to about one-eighth of a tank before you refuel. Just keep in mind, though, you never know if you're going to find a diesel station within 50 miles if you're out in a rural area or, or somewhere around there if you're out in really uh, like out in um, Kansas or any of those areas that are just miles and miles of flat country. So I personally prefer the manual fuel pump, mechanical I should say, mechanical fuel pump, not manual fuel pump. Imagine pumping your fuel manually, that would drive me crazy. I couldn't do that. Mechanical fuel pump. I got it right that time. Why I like the mechanical fuel pump is they're so much easier to replace and they're so much less expensive. We recently replaced the electronic fuel pump on our Chevy truck. I should say we had it replaced. 1500 bucks. They had to get into the fuel tank to get that little electric motor that drives that fuel pump out of there and I don't know why they put it in the fuel tank maybe it's a safety issue or what I don't know but I don't think it's a good idea and I may be wrong there may be some reason why they have to put it in the fuel tank but it sure costs a lot of money to get in there and replace that thing if your mechanical fuel pump goes out which I don't see how it really could unless <laughs> unless it's a defect or you just got an extreme amount of miles on your vehicle or like in this case here this engine sat for 15 years, this Wisconsin, and hadn't been used, we're going to have to replace it because the thing's just starting to rust, literally. So it's going to have to be replaced, but it's not going to cost near as much as an electronic fuel pump would, and it's going to be a lot easier to replace. So let's take a look at these mechanical fuel pumps. All right, here is this wind power generator with the Wisconsin VH40 engine, as you can see right there under the model number, serial number, and spec number, Wisconsin. And it's a pretty big engine, 30 horsepower, four cylinders. But here's where the me mechanical fuel pump came out, right here. And I'm going to crank the engine here. I've got a manual. Let's see, where did I put it? Oh, it's up here. I've got a manual backup starting crank here, kind of like the old tractors and the old cars, you'd crank the front of them until the engine fired up, so kind of a neat thing there. But as I crank this engine, watch that move up and down. <clears throat> it's got a lot of compression. There it is moving up and down. That's basically what drives this pump. Now, before I took this apart, this piece was on top of this. And as you can see, that's spring-loaded. 
The reason why that is spring loaded is, is there's screws that hold that in place. And then here is the little rubber flap that moves up and down. So you can see here, as I push this spring down, actually that would be push it up. I think, no, down, that's right. Yeah, it's just got a strong spring on it. You can see how that goes down, up, down, up, and that's what pumps your fuel because this is sealed here. This not only acts as serving to help the pump here to work, but it also acts as a seal. So when this is sealed, this bends back and forth on the seal here, and it basically is really simple. It just moves up and down, up and down. And then there are check valves right here. When this moves down, it sucks fuel in through this port here. This goes down through this check valve. As you can see, it's literally starting to rust up in there. There's a lot of varnish and this stuff is just going to have to be replaced. I can't clean it up. But anyway, this check valve opens by moving down because of the suction. It sucks fuel in. And then, as this starts to move back up, it pushes fuel up. In other words, it generates pressure. This check valve closes, won't let it return back to the tank, and then this spring-loaded check valve opens and allows fuel to enter this fuel bowl here. The fuel then runs out through this port here, comes out here, and then it goes in here to the carburetor where it is then mixed with air from the air filter and distributed to the four cylinders right here. That's how a mechanical fuel pump works. Like I said, very simple, very cheap compared to the electronic fuel pumps and very reliable. But they have their disadvantages and their advantages. And over here I am still waiting on my engine test stand to come in, but this engine has a mechanical fuel pump as well. And it is right there. Big thing. There's the in, there's the in where the fuel comes in from the fuel tank. This is a pump itself right here. Whoops. Zoom out a bit on my camera telling me to use low light mode but I don't need it right now. There's a mechanical fuel pump. Same principle as on that Wisconsin engine. Driven by the crankshaft. The fuel line then comes up here. Goes into the fuel filter. Is filtered. Comes out to the injector which is right here. And the injector distributes it to the cylinders. That's how it works on a diesel engine. Now I have another diesel engine over here. I'm starting to run out of time, so I'll make this quick. This high definition camcorder takes up a lot of memory. But fuel is stored here in the tank, runs out to the injector down there, and distributes it to the cylinders. So, I hope you enjoyed it. That's my best so far. I'm probably going to learn a little bit more eventually in the future, but I thought I would just show you all how these mechanical fuel pumps work and the insides of them. Pretty cool stuff. Hope you liked it.